Hello and welcome to our third video lecture uh, dealing with chapter three. Uh, remember we're talking about job order costing and we're looking at cost flows and external reporting. So up to this point we've already saw uh, how the costs flow through the costing system. We've already saw how to or we have seen how to prepare the cost of goods manufactured um, statement as well as how to calculate the cost of goods sold. So in this video we're going to look at um, um, manufacturing costs or manufacturing overhead rather and we're going to hopefully be able to calculate under applied and over applied as well as we're going to look at how do we fix either the under applied or over applied meaning how do we bring that manufacturing overhead account back to the, the the appropriate balance and what accounts do we use to fix that over or under now if you remember um, at the end of chapter two there were um, two slides that I said were were really important um, to understand and we were going to go through go through them really in, in, in chapter three and that was the under applied or over applied um, manufacturing overhead and understanding where it arises and, and what happens once it arises, how we fix that, right? So we need to really understand that the, the, the difference between the overhead costs that are applied versus the actual overhead costs for the repair, for the period um, are not the same, right? Why? Well, we already know this. And hopefully you're thinking, yeah, I already know this. It's because we have the predetermined overhead rate. We allocate overhead based on estimates that we think are going to happen. And a lot of times, majority of the time, um, our estimates are off, right? We're either going to incur more overhead than we anticipated or we're going to actually um, incur less overhead than we anticipated. So that, that difference is either under applied or over applied, right? I, I think we're okay with that. Now, when does it exist, right? And we sort of talked about this at the end of chapter two. So let's look at under applied first, right? Under applied overhead, what happens? Well, remember, if we under apply this is because that the amount of overhead that we actually apply to the jobs during that period, which we use the predetermined rate for, predetermined overhead rate for, is actually less than the total amount of overhead that really incurred. Okay, so we applied less than we actually incurred. Right? What about overhead? When does overhead exist? Well, think about it. Or excuse me, over applied. Well we're applying, we over apply, right? This happens when the amount of overhead that we apply to those jobs, again using that predetermined rate, are more than the total overhead costs that actually were incurred during the period, okay? And we saw a slide back, we saw a slide just like this back in chapter two and last week I said hey Make sure you guys, you know, this is a kind of a what's to come. Make sure you understand these concepts, okay? So, let's see what it really looks like, right? Let's use pair company, okay? So, pair company has an actual overhead of $165,000, right? With a total of 175,000 direct labor hours worked on the jobs. Okay, so we now have what actually happened, right? So we calculated previously a predetermined overhead rate of four dollars per direct labor hour. Okay, that's what we're applying. We're applying four dollars per one direct or per one direct labor hour. Okay, so we have to compare the $650,000 that actually incurred versus what we applied, okay? Back in chapter two, this is like a uh, uh, refresher, right? Because we already know how to apply overhead. We take that $4 predetermined overhead rate and multiply it by the actual direct labor hours. 
In this case, the actual direct labor hours are 170,000 bucks. So, we take four dollars times 170,000 hours. We actually applied 168,000 dollars. Okay, actually incurred. We actually incurred this 650. We applied 680. Did we underapply or overapply? Well, we overapplied. We applied more than we actually had. Sorry, going the wrong way. Which they tell us here, right? Perco overapplied their overhead for the year by thirty thousand. How'd you get thirty thousand? Well, we took the difference between what we applied versus what we actually incurred in overhead. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at another example. Tiger Company had actual manufacturing overhead costs of one thousand, or excuse me, one million two hundred ten thousand and a predetermined overhead rate of four dollars per machine hour. Okay? So that's what actually happened, or I'm sorry, we have what the, the actual total overhead cost incurred. They give us the predetermined overhead rate. Now they tell us that hey, Tiger Incorporated, they actually worked uh, 200, 290,000 machine hours during the period. We need to figure out did they underapply or overapply? Well, this is easy, right? So in order, for, in order for us to figure out what was applied, we take the predetermined, oh, that should be a P, predetermined overhead rate and multiply it by the actual allocation base or the cost driver. Now in this case we use machine hours, so I'm going to say the actual machine hours. Okay, so we take four dollars times two hundred ninety thousand, and I'm not doing that in my head, so I'm going to pull out the calculator: two hundred ninety thousand times four gives us. One million one hundred and sixty thousand dollars. That was the plot. However, we actually incurred one million two hundred and ten thousand dollars. So, just by looking at it, did we underapply or overapply? Well, we applied one point. 1 six million we actually incurred 1.2 so we under applied right how much did we under apply well that's easy we take the 1 million 160 thousand subtract out the 1 million 210 thousand we get 50 thousand so we actually under applied by 50 thousand see if we're right oh huh, we sure are right and notice the calculation here. How much did we apply? How much was the under or over? Okay. If I were you, I'd make sure you maybe jot this down, these um, uh, way to calculate under applied or over applied, and because this will be this will show up probably on a test or a quiz, right? Um, you should already know how to apply overhead. That was just a uh, oh, sorry. That was just a quick review. Okay. So let's look at under over applied and under applied. Okay. So we have a balance, right? And let's go back to the the first um, example that we looked at. That Perco, that thirty thousand dollars of over applied overhead, right? How do we get rid of that, right? There's two acceptable ways for us to get rid of it. Okay, meaning we have a balance in that manufacturing overhead, right? Because we over applied, right? We applied too much. Thirty thousand dollars too much. That means that our cost of goods sold is too low, or our finished goods in cost of or um yeah, cost of goods sold is too low, or our finished goods inventory 
is also not accurate, right? Think about it. We apply too much, right? So we apply too much, that manufacturing overhead, that overage flows into WIP, then it flows into the finished goods, so our finished goods is probably overstated, right? So there's two acceptable ways, or yeah, two acceptable ways. We can close it to cost of goods sold, that's the easiest way. Or we can proportionally close it to our inventory counts, which would be the work in process, the finished goods, and the cost of goods sold. Okay, so let's go through both of these. All right, so let's look what happens here. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's look at this. Remember, this is the cost of goods sold is an expense account. Okay, we increase our expenses with the debit. We decrease them with the credit. Remember, left side is always the left side is always the debit side and the right side always going to be the credit side okay so what happened well we over applied by thirty thousand dollars right so that means we have a thirty thousand dollar we look at the difference between these two right we over applied by thirty thousand dollars so we have a credit balance right here of um, thirty thousand within the manufacturing overhead account okay this should not be here the end of the period the manufacturing overhead should be equal to zero meaning we shouldn't have a balance uh, a debit balance we should not have a credit balance okay so how do we fix this very easy since we have a over applied balance here our cost of goods sold are too high so how do we decrease them? We decrease them with a credit. Well, the other side to that transaction or that journal entry is going to be the debit to manufacturing overhead because if we have a credit balance of 30,000, we put a $30,000 uh, debit or yeah, debit entry here, we end up with a zero balance, which which is what we what we need, what we should have. Okay? The other acceptable, acceptable way to do it is to allocate that overage between the two inventory counts and the cost of goods sold. Okay, so let's assume for a minute that the overhead applied in in ending WIP inventory, um, ending finished goods inventory, and cost of goods sold. Right. Let's assume for a minute that they have an ending balance of 68,000, 204,000 and 408,000, right? So the total value of all these is going to be 680,000, okay? So we're going to proportionally allocate that $30,000 overage. I'm just going to put a K for 30,000 to um, WIP at a rate of 68,000 divided by 680,000 finished goods at a rate of 204,000 divided by 608,000 or 680,000 and the same thing to cost of goods sold. Okay, so let's see how this works out. So the first thing we have to do um, is to allocate, figure out what percentage of WIP finished goods and cost of goods sold would be. Right. So we get 10 percent, 30 percent, and 60 percent. How do we do that? Well, again, the ending balance divided by the total ending balances of these three accounts. Okay, so we get. 10, 30, and 60. The next thing we got to do is then figure out, okay, well, what percentage of this 30,000, oh, sorry, what percentage of this 30,000 is going to be allocated to each of these accounts? So we take 68,000 um, times 10%, which would be 3%, or sorry, 3,000 finished goods, we take that balance of 204,000 times 30%, which would be 
or 9,000, damn it, sorry. And then the cost of goods sold. Well, the balance is 408,000 times that 60%. That ends up being 18,000. So notice we have that total of these ending balances and we have the $30,000 of allocation. What's the journal entry look like? Well, that's easy. It's very similar to what it to what we did to cost of goods sold, right? Remember, these are assets. This is an expense account. Okay? So we actually, or I'm sorry, we applied 30000 So we had actually had a $30,000 debit balance, or credit balance, excuse me, um, on the manufacturing overhead. To get rid of that $30,000 credit balance, we need a debit entry of 30000 And then we decrease all our assets and expenses by the amounts that we calculated here. Okay, so it's really not very difficult. Um, th there's a couple step, couple move, moving pieces to this. Okay, so what are we doing here? <coughs> Excuse me. Remember to get rid of any overage or, un or over applied or under applied overhead. We got two methods, right? We can close it out, close the whole thing out to cost of goods sold, or we can allocate between what three accounts. WIP, finished goods, cost of goods sold. Okay. The second method, this is considered to be more more accurate, right? Um, it is a little more complex than the first method, which we just closed the whole thing out to cost of goods sold. Okay. Um, for our intensive purposes, for class, um, the first one's probably the easiest one to do, right? However, in the real world since you're making business decisions and you're you want accurate information you'd probably be better off to do the second method okay all right so <clears throat> we have a question here that says what effect will over applied in or, excuse me over applied overhead have on net operating income okay this was in the slides at the end of chapter two that I said, hey, make sure you understand these concepts. I'd study these concepts, memorize them, you know, whatever. So let's think about this, okay? We have revenue, right? And let's just use easy numbers. We have $100, right? Let's say that we have um, COGS, and we'll say it's the unadjusted balance, meaning, oh, crap, sorry. Well, income will increase. Well, let's go back and figure out how, how it'll work, right? So let's say that, um, actually, let's use 1,000. And where, and let's just say our cost of, gold, cost of goods sold are 680,000, right? So let's think about this. What is our gross profit here? Right? Gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold. Well, we have a thousand in revenue. Cost of goods sold are six eighty. Right. So that's three twenty. Right. Well, we know that we overapplied. Right. We need to decrease this by thirty thousand, or in this example, thirty. <coughs> Excuse me. So we need to decrease our cost of goods sold to 650. What's going to happen to our net income or, or our gross profit here? Well, it's going to increase, right? By 30 by thirty dollars, okay? So just making, making sure you understand the conceptually the fact that, hey, if our cost of goods sold are overstated, that means our net income or, or our gross profit is going to be understated. OK? 
cost of goods sold are overstated, our net income is going to be understated. Or vice versa, if our cost of goods sold is understated, then our net income is going to be overstated. Okay? Well, if we fix it, it's going to have an effect on our net income, right? If we if we have an over applied um, or if we yeah, if we have over applied overhead, we need to decrease the cost of goods sold and our net income is going to go up. Conversely, if we have an under applied cost of goods sold, we need to increase the cost of goods sold which will then decrease our net income or our gross profit. Okay, So that is the end of chapter 3 my friends. Uh, we have another video and in that video we're going to go over the um, examples for um, the study guide. Okay, So please tune back in for, for that one.